Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon will be about our gospel lesson today, but our text for this morning comes from our Old Testament lesson. In that day, the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. These are the marvelous words of our Lord that we will meditate upon this morning, my brothers and sisters of Christ. There is a whole lot of hearing and believing in our gospel lesson. Even by a deaf person. And it is all by and through our Lord Jesus Christ. So I want us today to look at some of that hearing and believing and see what all of that has to do with us today. The first hearing and believing actually happens before what we have recorded in our gospel lesson today. As a matter of fact, it's not even recorded in Scripture, but it must have happened from what we hear today. I ask you this question. Let's look at the reading if you have it in front of you. Verse 31. Where is Jesus in our gospel lesson? Verse 31 tells us that he is in the region of the Decapolis. The Decapolis. Does that sound familiar to you at all? Well, it should because Jesus has been there before. That time when he was in the Decapolis, the people he encountered actually asked him to go away because he had driven a demon out of a man, or actually a bunch of demons out of that man into a herd of pigs, and the herd of pigs went down and drowned in the lake, and all the people said, Jesus, get out of here. Maybe they were angry at him for messing up their economy, I don't know. And the demon-possessed man, though, in that account, the one from whom all those demons came out, he asked Jesus if he could follow him. But Jesus, it says, would not permit him, but said to him this, Go home. Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy upon you. Well, apparently this one man proclaiming Jesus to his unbelieving, probably mostly Gentile neighbors, the ones who would ask Jesus to leave, had a pretty big effect. Because we read in verse 33 of our gospel today that Jesus took the deaf man aside from the crowd. Somewhere between Mark chapter 5 and Mark chapter 7, the witness of one man had turned a whole community and now a crowd of people wanted to know more about Jesus. The witnessing of one man. A few children. One congregation. Makes a big difference. What about that guy? I mean, doesn't the Bible say that faith comes by hearing? And this guy can't hear. How is he going to ever believe? What do you think a little thing like physical deafness is going to hinder Jesus from doing what he has come to do? And now we have those three wonderful words from our text today from Isaiah. I love these words of scripture. In that day. It is a marvelous phrase that God uses in the Old Testament to talk about that time of coming of the power of God and his salvation. When it breaks into this sin-cursed world and does amazing, restoring things. In that day, salvation. In that day, 
Jesus comes. Isaiah had also prophesied by the direction of the Holy Spirit that in that day, when the Messiah comes, that the eyes of the blind will be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, the lame will leap like deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For that deaf and mostly mute man that Jesus met that day in the Decapolis, that in that day is here for him. For this deaf and mute man is in that day is right now because Jesus is there. And Jesus is very soon going to open this man's ears so he can fully hear the message of salvation directly from the lips of the Savior Jesus. But even now, while this man cannot hear, Jesus is going to make sure that this deaf man hears the message that Jesus has come to bring. This man who is deaf and mostly mute, can neither fully understand what is going on or express himself to others to even ask questions. In this day, there was no American Sign Language. There was no common way of communicating with the deaf, so the deaf were pretty much just kind of outside everything. People ignored them as if they weren't even there. But did you hear what Scripture had to say today? It said this man had friends because his friends brought him to Jesus. In faith, they turned him over to Jesus, trusting that Jesus could do for him what nobody else could possibly do. And how did they know that? Because of that witness of that other guy two chapters before. In faith, they turned him over to Jesus. Deafness, they knew, was no barrier to the power of Jesus. Jesus would be heard by this deaf man because Jesus was going to come to him in a way so that he could receive the power that Jesus had to bring. So we hear in our gospel today that Jesus goes up to that man and sticks his fingers with his ears. Right in his ears. Why do you think Jesus did that? Jesus is showing this man, making it absolutely clear to him so that he could hear, even though he couldn't hear, that what Jesus was going to do was for him. And he was going to unstop the ears of his that were stopped up. And then Jesus spits and touches his tongue. He doesn't spit on the guy. He goes, hey. And then he touches his tongue. He wants this man to hear the message. And what's the message? That meekness that's in your mouth? It's going to be gone. And he puts his finger on that man's tongue and he says, this isn't just a general thing. This is for you. I have come to heal you. And then Jesus sighs, and he looks up to heaven. Because he wants this deaf man to hear that what is about to happen to him is by the power of God. Not man, not by medicine, not by magic. Do you think the deaf man heard Jesus and what he was saying in these three gestures? Do you think faith came in that hearing? Can there be any doubt? Yeah. Sadly, there's always doubt. Maybe in the man, maybe in the crowd watching. So Jesus says clearly, ah! the common language of the people, meaning be open. And immediately the man's ears were open, his, his tongue was loosed, and he spoke plainly. And the crowd was amazed. The Savior is come. In that day is now. The Savior prophesied is there among them, and they zealously proclaim he does all things well. Certainly, 
so much more faith came in with the hearing of Christ. The faith comes by hearing how will the deaf man ever believe? He just saw how Jesus can do. Are there still deaf who need to hear? Absolutely. There are still people who are physically deaf in our world today, and there are countless Christian ministries that reach out to them so that they can hear the message of their Savior Jesus, the good news that He has come for them, because in that day is still now. But those aren't the only deaf people who need to hear. We can be awfully deaf sometimes. Deaf to the clear message that Jesus would have us to hear, but we would rather sin than be saved. And there are also unbelievers all around us who are deaf to the message of salvation in Jesus Christ, either because that message is kind of being drowned out by all the other messages of this world, or because they stuck their own spiritual fingers in their ears, and they don't want to hear the message because they see Christianity's a downer. It's a bummer. You guys don't have any fun. You're not you got joy. And that's something they're missing. Can these deaf still hear the message? Both them and us? Absolutely. You think Jesus is going to let something little like spiritual deafness caused by our sin or our apathy get in his way? You think Jesus wishes to open up sinners? He wishes to open our ears so that we can hear the curse of the law against our sin, but also that we can hear his absolution in the gospel. He wishes to open up our closed ears to hear the good news. For faith does come by hearing however Jesus does that. But it's the hearing of the message of his death, his resurrection, to save us. Not only does Jesus wish this, he does this. He opens the ears by the power of his word. He proclaims that opening through us. As sinners, we have been opened by the forgiveness and grace that is right in front of us. We then share that opening word with others. And yet the opening is right here in front of us today. In front of our eyes, in front of our faith. In holy baptism, in confession and absolution, in the Lord's Supper, in this coming together of the body of Christ in this place. Those of us who have been set free by these gracious means should not be able to remain tongue-tied about the miracles that we get to witness regularly. Now that salvation has come to us by grace through the sacrifice of Jesus, we can't keep silent anymore. We say along with the psalmist, I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart, I will tell of your wonders. Jesus' saving, opening work is done. He said that at the cross when he said, it is finished. And so for us, my friends, there is no more need for silence. We may never witness a, a miraculous physical uh, miracle like we saw or heard about in our gospel today, but we witness miracles of salvation through word and sacrament all the time. Every time you see someone baptized, you see a resurrection. Every time you hear the confession and absolution, a dead sinner becomes a living, forgiven saint, forgiven saint. Every time we come to this table, we receive the very body and blood of Jesus Christ. These are all saving miracles, and we get to witness them so often that maybe we just take them for granted. Instead, we should be compelled, compelled to tell the story of redemption to others, to witness to the others what we have witnessed ourselves. Every one of us has received 
the witness of the miracle of forgiveness and grace in our Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of us is now a witness of Jesus Christ to others. We have had our ears and our hearts open by the word of God. The sin which walled us off from God has been removed by the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has commanded us, we know, that we should want to speak. Yes, the silence of our tongues has been ended. Open ears can't help to hear, but loose tongues, they can remain silent and reluctant to speak. Will there be opposition to your witness? Sure there will. But should that keep your loose tongue silent? Certainly not. You see, our final reaction to the exercise of Christ's great power among us and the forgiveness and grace we have been received should be the same as it was in the Decapolis so long ago. Witness and praise. The people say, He has done all things well. So we gladly proclaim to those who will hear the message of Jesus Christ. We witness to them the continuing miracles of grace and forgiveness that go around even today saving souls from sin. We gladly hear it, we gladly preach it, we sing it, and we carry it out into the world. Jesus promises us too that he will join us in this life vocation as we go out from this place to share that message. We proclaim the message that Jesus is among us, that he has opened us up, and that he has done all things well. He has joined us to himself and to life in holy baptism. And so we rejoice in his presence. He comes to us in the sacrament of the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, in this bread and wine, which is truly his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. It is by these means that he fulfills the promise to us, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, and we can proclaim in joy he has done all things well. Because Jesus has said to you, feel, and you have it. The gospel has come into you, and we see and rejoice in the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ given to us. And we take it out into the world so that others may know about it as well. So my friends, be open. Be open by the power of God to witness and to zealously proclaim to others the marvelous opening of forgiveness and grace that you have, that you have received from Jesus Christ. That is also for all who will know Jesus Christ and their salvation in Him through the witness that you will give. Even as simply and say, Jesus loves me. This I know. And he loves you too. But I tell you why. Be a friend to the spiritually deaf by doing what the deaf man's friends did that day. Bring them to Jesus. And be open. For truly our Lord Jesus has done everything well. And we say that in joy. Amen. Amen. Good job.